I hated myself. Things I were doing to get drugs were demoralizing. Like my standards just kept getting lower and lower. By the time I was five, my parents got divorced and one of my like first memories is when I was six, I used to go around the house and steal change from like my mom's purse or my sister's piggy bank. I would take a walk up to Walgreens and I would buy like chocolate frosting for a cake. <laughs> and I would run back home and I would be so excited and I'd like go in my closet and I'd just eat the frosting. That gave me this sense of like excitement and relief. And that was kind of the beginning of my double life. Like my dad was really strict um, rather controlling and my mom was a lot more loving. I was able to communicate with her but she really had a lot of her own demons like facing her depression and stuff so um, to go back and forth from like total opposite households where they never communicated. I found the ability to numb myself through music and through cutting myself. I had tried meth with some friends and it was really fun. I felt beautiful. I felt accepted. Eventually I ended up going home and no one really told me like there was going to be this massive come down from it. So I had been kind of fantasizing and obsessing about suicide for a long time. And after just the first time of doing meth, I thought it'd be appropriate to just stop living. So I tried to kill myself. And the last thing I remember is taking out all my piercings because I didn't need them anymore. I didn't need this physical body. Like I just wanted to be gone. I took a bunch of pills and I woke up a couple days later in the ICU. I had like a catheter, I had IVs, I had like the whole nine yards and also I had like my, my family sitting there like in tears. I ended up going to a place called St. Luke's. It's like a mental hospital for kids I guess. The whole time just like devastated to be breathing. I got out and it was New Year's Eve and I went to a party and at that party, someone offered me ecstasy and I tried it and like for the first time in my life, like whew. Like the only way I can describe it is everything before that moment was black and white and after that it became color and I, I'm honestly today, I'm really grateful for that experience because without that, I don't think I'd be here. I don't think I would have had purpose. You know, I barely got through school, I continued to like do different drugs, mostly party drugs, somehow get into college, I'm like living by myself and being pretty independent at that time until I met a boy. I was coming down off ecstasy and acid one night and he came over with some friends. He's like, oh, you know what really helps with that? And he like like brought out the blue pill and uh, I did perk 30s and quickly became hooked on opiates. But at this point I'm like building a tolerance slowly and slowly and like when I don't do it, I get sick and I don't really understand because I never really had that feeling with other drugs. I quickly start to lose everything I drop out of school, I lose my job, I lose my apartment, I lose people around me, I burn every bridge that you can imagine. Um, and this begins the process of me like going in and out of detox for the next several years. I would go in there with hopes of never doing this again, of this being the last time, and I could have looked you in the eye and promised you it would be. I never had the full willingness to change and to like, complete the 12 steps, which is something that I heard Throughout all the years, that was like the one solution. I lost contact with my dad. I moved across the country to Minnesota with my sister and I burnt that bridge. You know, a lot of my family like won't talk to me anymore. I'd gotten out of some halfway house, like some treatment center thing, and I immediately relapsed. And the next day I was just like throwing up and I couldn't control it and I was just so sick. And I became very quickly like an isolated drug user. I didn't want to hang out with you or anyone because I didn't want to have to share my dope. So I'm right back to that little girl. I'm right back to that like 16 year old girl that wanted to die, you know, and, and I've been self-medicating for the last 10 years of my use. Recovery was introduced to me when I was in detox and like people came in, they call it H&I where they like bring meetings in. I was at my mom's house crashing in one of her rooms, like by myself. I had been up all night, dope sick. I had no money. I had no connections. I was like literally in my bed just doing cotton shot after cotton shot of like used cottons and just so sick. And my arms were torn up, like I couldn't hit. I couldn't even get high if I hit. But something in me was like just so broken. And I try not to forget that desperation. Because today my life is pretty good, but like that's who I am at my core. 
That's the kind of drug addict I am. I'm alone. I'm stabbing myself with nothing. I am just like doing anything I can not to feel the way that I feel. Somewhere in that morning of like being dope sick, I had, for some reason, I hit up this girl and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. She knew someone that was in charge of scholarships at a rehab. He called me and he's like, yo, we're getting you into rehab, like out of the blue. He's like, oh, so we got you into rehab. You get to come live like for free for 30 days and get well and you know, have a place to eat and a place to sleep and we'll take care of you. And I'm like, like in tears, like that doesn't happen to someone like me. Like, why would someone want to do that for me? Like, don't you know who I am? For whatever reason, I found the willingness to take that journey. Like I didn't have much to lose. When I went to detox for the last time before I got sober, I ended up at St. Luke's, which is the hospital I went to when I was 16 and I tried to kill myself. I don't even really know how I ended up there, but I ended up there and it was like the same room. And I just had this realization of like how full circle my life has come. The only coping skill I had was, was heroin or like whatever, coke or whatever it was that was in front of me at the time. You know, it sucks to not have a solution and to be trying to figure it out for yourself all these years like there's a ton of people out there that want to help like I'm one of those people now that want to help I know that's true because I really do and like I, I know it's genuine so I've experienced it I didn't stay dope stick like I ended up going out and getting high again like something something happened I pulled some kind of game made some kind of trick and I went out and got high again I was sick of taking advantage of my mom I literally had like nothing to lose. All that I knew is I had tried everything. I had tried running. I've just been running from myself for all these years and I'm always stuck with her. The only thing I hadn't done was completed my 12 steps. Like I thought at the time, like maybe I'll half-ass them, but I had like a speck of willingness started to feel again. And I will never lie and say that getting sober makes everything better. There were days that I really just didn't want to exist and didn't want to have to do this work to do it, but that little bit of gratitude that I had went a long way. And I had a great therapist, I had a great community of women and men around me there. They suggested I go to sober living, they suggested I get into therapy. Since I've been sober, shit happens. I ended up getting kicked out of that sober living because I got fired from a job and I couldn't pay. I went to live with my mom and I watched my dog get hit by a car and die. You know, I've lost friends close to me. I've had cars break down. Like, like life is shitty sometimes, you know? And like, it doesn't stop getting shitty just because you get sober. Some of like the coping skills that I learned to deal with those shitty situations have saved my life. My life is like literally an example of playing the tape forward. When I get high, I don't know when it's gonna stop or if it's gonna stop. And I know that I'm gonna lose everything along the way and asking for help, like from the universe or like whatever it is, just finding this quiet, honest moment within yourself. And that's helped me a lot. Like I was so close to getting high at one point after I got kicked out of that sober living. Through the 12 steps, I've learned different prayers and I just kept repeating them over and over again until I felt better. I would get outside of myself, like I went and took a hot shower and once I got out of the shower, I felt a little bit of relief. And at that point I called my sponsor and I'm like, yo, this is what's happening. And that just took the power from it. Like it just made that fleeting moment just go away. That was the first kind of time I had made those coping skills real in my life. Without that, like without that knowledge and that education and that experience and treatment, who knows, man, I would have just kept doing what I knew and I would have kept feeling sorry for myself and I would have kept getting high and feeling numb until like I literally had nothing left because that's what I do. What I'd recommend is just getting honest with yourself and reaching out. It's like there's a lot of good people that work in recovery and you can call and just talk to someone and figure out like what works for you in your area. Or even if it's just going to a meeting and getting honest. But you don't have to suffer alone. I'll be driving in my car. I have a car. I'll be like on the freeway about to go home and listening to music and all of a sudden it just hits me. Like I am not a slave anymore. Like, I just have this freedom. <laughs> I found a job that I was really good at. It was in technology. I did that for like a year or so. made pretty good money. Started getting bored with it, and an op opportunity opened up to like go work at the rehab I went to. And it's so rad to see these girls like in very similar positions I was in and see the gratitude that they have and be able to just like sit with them and like love them. It's fun. I get to like drive the van and <laughs> have the music up and um, 
it's cool. It's a cool experience. I don't know if it's what I'll do forever, but I do have a sponsor who's really involved with like H and I, and she's really awesome, and that's kind of what I want out of my recovery. So I asked her to be my sponsor, and she's great. I also sponsor women, and um, that like helps get me out of myself. That's something I never did before. I always took and took. So I love being able to do that today to my family so far. And they didn't really go as I expected. And I feel like I'm doing the best I can at this moment. And that's all right. You know, I'm not perfect. It's not gonna get better overnight. I was able to pay back the sober living I got kicked out of, which <laughs> that's not me. Uh, but that felt really good to make that amends, you know. So much is possible beyond what I could have ever imagined. I hope for my future, you know, I hope to be somewhere completely different than I even imagine at this point. I have that hope and that faith that like anything's possible. Detox to Rehab wants to help as many people as possible and do it the right way. Please subscribe, comment, and like our channel. Thank you for watching.